Welcome to After Dark Creations Art and Review. I'm Jen, your artist and monster buddy, here to share my love of cult films, music, movies, books, and television with you. This week, I'll be reviewing Tigers Are Not Afraid. Now, I apologize if I sound a little extra throaty this week. I got sick and I lost my voice, so this is the best I have sounded in days. And because I want to get this video out to you guys, I'm so sorry. You're going to have to deal with me sounding extra throaty. But let's go ahead and move on. I was very excited to do this film review because this movie was spectacular and I cannot recommend it enough. It is going to be a new classic for me. Honestly, I was enthralled by this film. So if you haven't seen it, I fully 100% recommend that you check this movie out. So let's get into it. Tigers Are Not Afraid is a 2017 Spanish language Mexican horror film and has a 7.1 out of 10 on IMDb and a 97% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's directed by Isa Lopez. The film stars Paula Lora, Hansel Casillas, Rodrigo Cortez, and Juan Ramon. The film is currently available on Shutter, and I will be giving a spoiler-free review in order to encourage you to watch it, so head to Shutter after this review. The film follows Estrella, a young girl living in a city plagued by narcos satanicos, which are cartel members known as the Huascas, who sacrifice locals in satanic rituals. They're also involved in human trafficking, and unfortunately, Estrella's mother is one such victim. She eventually befriends friends, a group of orphans whose parents met the same tragic fate. The orphans are led by Shine, who seeks to end the slaughter of local families by the Huascas. He wants revenge for the death of their- The children face off with the cartel while surrounded by ghosts, violence, and death. The story is fascinating and surreal. The film is well acted and visually stunning. I found myself thinking about this movie long after watching it. And I'm also not too proud to admit that I ride. The viewer becomes deeply concerned about the fate of these children and it is so well acted and convincing. And although there are elements of mystical surrealism, supernatural elements, there's something that feels very real about it. It's almost like watching a, a fantasy that's based in reality and you care about the fate of our protagonists. Lisa Lopez created a wonderful and stunning world. The cinematography is gorgeous and there are elements of of the film, like the practical effects, the makeup, and the way they show some of the ghosts is incredibly eerie and unsettling. There's constantly an atmosphere of supernatural danger from the haunting of the spirits, but also the real danger that these children face. So I was very on the edge of my seat through the whole film, and I'd be remiss to compare it to any other films that are Spanish language that have essence of mystical surrealism in it, like The Devil's Backbone, even like Water for Chocolate had some elements of supernatural in the story, but this is so different from all of those films. There's such a freshness to it and a gravitas to the characters throughout the story, and this isn't really a spoiler, but throughout the story you see the children having to survive and scrounge for food, but that they're still children. They do things that children still do. They tell each other stories and they make art. Throughout the whole film, Shine is painting the narrative and story of what is happening to his friends on local derelict buildings and walls and the kids at one point decorate a bunch of soccer balls and they turn them into totems with images on them and I feel like the artwork that's shown in the story also helps to further the narrative which I thought was incredibly unique and I love those elements I found them incredibly inspiring as an artist so let's get into how the film informs the art again I loved all the artwork that was on display and shown throughout the film the plush tiger that was carried by the character Moro. He was the youngest of the group and he carried this little plush tiger everywhere he went. And the tiger plays a greater role in the overall narrative, but I was very much inspired by that tiger. So I recreated it and sculpted it. And then inside of the mouth of the tiger are ghosts. And that's just again, because there are ghosts in this story. I tried to keep the colors in the background similar. I tried to make the tiger look distressed and worn, just as the plush tiger looked. So I hope you're able to check this movie out on Shutter, Please, if you've watched it, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of it. Also, next week there will not be a video. Next week is Horrorgasm, so I will be crazy busy with that. But I am going to film throughout Horrorgasm, taking pictures of the art, and I will have a whole Horrorgasm post-mortem video for you guys to watch. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Jen, and let's keep it spooky, friends.